listening to Power 102.1 FM locally, regionally, and internationally. This is Breaking the Cycle with me, Garth Christopher, right here every Monday, every Monday evening from 7 to 9 p.m. Let's get to work. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, as I have told you last week, Philip Colin, when, when we had um, Christophe Samlal and uh, Anthony Defoe, that's his uh, campaign manager, uh, Philip called in and I said, hey, don't call in, partner, I want to hear. <laughs> and he said, to, uh, he'll be here. He said, well, talk, talk to the Fiero. I said, Fiero, you're so big, boy. <laughs> Yes, and well, Philip is here, and his PR is here, Miss uh, Janice Leomon Cricky is here, and of course, uh, Philip Alexander, who is, uh, huh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, he is the political leader of the Progressive Empowerment Party. Um, you know, Watson Duke is the Progressive Democratic Patriots, and um, Philip is, is the founder and the political leader. Yes. Well, he, he will tell us if he's the founder, um, but he's the political leader of the Progressive Empowerment Party. It's a, it's a political party that um, uh, people want to say is a third force, Philip, and they are saying, I get the impression that Philip uh, perhaps uh, wants to move away from the third force thing. Um, uh, uh, to just being a competitor and a strong competitor, but of course he will he will tell us more about that. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, uh, Philip Alexander is with us, and let's get right into it. Philip, good evening. Good evening, Garth. Good evening to all of the Power One Hundred Two listeners. Good evening to all of the people following us on social media. Good evening to the P. EP Progressive Empowerment Party Public Relations Officer PRO Janice Lehman Creaky who's here with us. Good evening nice. everyone. Good evening. You 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 um Philip. You just inferred something. I just mm -hmm. wanna just clear that up a little bit. Not that I set in the tone for the match because no, I know you set the tone for the I know you set the tone for the match already, right? Bracing. But I'm just saying that um the reason the Progressive Empowerment Party has a PRO and someone of the stature of Janice Lehman Creaky is that we understand the power of communication, and we want to make sure that the mission does not get lost in the narrative. So we have a PRO and a strong communications team that keep all of the wheels on the tracks. So just to put that out there. Um, Philip, you have a, a political party. Are you the founder of the progressive uh, Empowerment yeah, the Progressive Empowerment Party. I am one of the founders, yes. Um, it came out of a lot of work that was being done. Myself, Anne-Marie Dulal, Ian Griffith, Harry Hunt, we were meeting regularly. It had started off with conversations. We started to meet regularly. We decided to form into an activist group, take on matters in the public interest, utilizing the courts, bringing issues outside of the realm of just governance and into the realm of people power. And then it became obvious to everybody, as it always does, that the source of most of the problems in mm -hmm. Trinidad and Tobago is the political directorate and the mismanagement at that level. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't make sense mo continuously mopping a floor when you could turn off the tap as where the water is running. 
So we decided that we would get into the political fray and give the people a political option and the Progressive Empowerment Party was formed. But are you all prepared for that? Oh, absolutely. These are people, and the people who are in this party now are some strong warriors. This is not no... And you, I mean, you, you, you've interviewed a couple. You see they're not fly by night. Our candidates, our local government candidates for this election stronger than all the other candidates out there. I mean, it's chalk and cheese. The level the Progressive Empowerment Party is playing at is changing the game. I have to tell somebody today, our national security designate is Dilworth Braffitt, forward based in South Korea, top secret United States military clearance. That is the level we're, we're operating at, that we're coming to the conversation, not just with solutions, but with people capable of taking the solutions forward. Do you want to become the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago? It was never the first choice, but somebody has to do this job. Trinidad and Tobago is in a mess, God. It's in a total mess. Nothing but, works. But do you want to become the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago? At this juncture, I have to say, someone needs to bring management principles to government in Trinidad and Tobago. We've created this kind of illusion that we have royalty in Trinidad and Tobago and we vote people into power. When what we're supposed to do is vote people into office. When Father Harold Imam Shah blessed us on our political journey, he said, be servants who lead and leaders who serve. And that, that dovetailed. Well, why, why, why can't you simple answer, simply answer the question? Well, do you wish to become the prime minister? I want to put it in the context of, I think what we need more than anything else right now is a manager. And we need to we need to understand that that the blue. So you want to become the manager of Trinidad and Tobago? Yes. And not, I, I, and not the we want to stray from these terminologies that are bandied about. The but people. that's what this is. It's the prime minister. Do you want to become the prime first minister among equals? Of Trinidad first and among equals, the manager, Tobago. the person responsible for. God, you know, people who are listening to you will say you are just playing. With no, them. no, no, but there are steps along the way. There are steps along the way. We understand about the we, steps if you along start, the way. If you start the conversation and ask a question, if you want to be prime minister, it sounds like that's the initiative. That, 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 that is the most. Forget what it sounds like. Forget what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. We want to know what you will you like to we become are, the prime minister. We are a, we are a political organization set up along the lines of the Westminster model. If we end up in the parliament with the majority among ourselves, there will be a first among equals. At this point, it is most likely going to be me. I asked you a time, and you teach no, me no. how to make a watch. No, it's just that a lot of this time has to be spent informing and empowering the people as to how this stuff really works. And I want to come back to this. Our notion of a prime minister is these people who show up um, for big events and make big speeches. A prime minister is supposed to roll up his sleeves and get the job done, especially in a country like Trinidad and Tobago. We are dot. We don't qualify as a borough or county. In well, yes, I would love to become the prime minister of Trinidad and Tobago, but I will be a prime minister who will roll up my sleeves and get the job done. Janice, we need to bring God on board the communications team. <laughs> <laughs> Um, people, people have a lot of difficulty with you as a person. Does that bother you at all? No. So you are telling the world, the people who you wish and would like and you most likely at some point in time would be going out there asking them to vote for me or vote for my candidates and for and, and, and for the party, and most likely if we get the majority into parliament, I will become the prime minister, and you are telling these same people, you know what, I don't care about how you look at me. That's what you just said. But please, cough syrup says, it tastes awful, but it works. I want to be a straight talker, straight shooter. I want you to understand, we're not here to give them comfort and lies. Some of it, some of what we have to bring to you, are terribly inconvenient truths. But I want to not have to disguise it in rainbows and gumdrops. I want to be able to come straight and talk to the people and tell them, listen, we keep voting numbskulls into office. We keep voting people based on issues other than who is capable, most capable to get the job done. We're never having conversations about plans, programs, policies, ideas, track records. What have you done? What can you do? What do you propose to do last night? Last night, there were people standing at Pigot's Corner in Belmont 
where Stu Chung is going to go and give free Zumba classes next week. And, and Pigot's Corner was flooding. I don't think... I don't 56 think, years of flooding. I, I don't think people have such an issue with your ideas. But people have problems with the man. They think that you are like a raging bull. Some of them... Um, they think you are racist, and I mean, you're, you you're, you're, how, you're playing how you're playing to you? other people trying to manage yeah. the narrative. And outside of reality, people need to be able to pigeonhole you. God Christopher needs to be something. They need they need to find a way to put a handle on God Christopher, especially if God Christopher is not somebody that's easily handled. Philip Edward Alexander has opinions on everything, but I do my research. When I come to the conversation, I don't just know what's wrong, I know why. I know who. And I'm willing to say. There are people in this country do not want to be exposed, the things that I am exposing. We, I am in court with multiples of people right now challenging all these paper tigers and beneficiaries of a failed nation. Trinidad and Tobago right now, every evening, the largest wholesale baking company in the Caribbean puts people out on the street to vend illegally without permission, without any official permission from any regional corporation. Mm -hmm. Nobody in any regional corporation could answer as to how it is allowed to take place. But what is being done is that this baking company is putting suffering people to sell bread on the side of the road and put them at risk to emphysema and asthma, breathing in carbon monoxide. You put them at, the, at, at, at busy junctions where there are other bakeries. And obviously the, the plan is to shut the other bakeries down. The people in that bakery, in the biggest, largest wholesale bakery in, in, in the Caribbean, they don't want to hear me talk about it. When I ask the Chamber of Commerce and the Trinidad Tobago Manufacturers Association to weigh in on this and call them out on that, they don't want, they don't, they're not going to like that. A lot of things that people have been getting away with in this country, take for example education. If you go into the prestige schools, girl, and you look at the demographic makeup of the students in the prestige schools, and then you go to the lowest rung schools in Trinidad, and look at the demographic makeup, you'll see it neither is totally reflective of the mix of Trinidad and Tobago. How are you going to how are you going to effect this change when you need to at least have 21 seats in parliament to become the prime minister and to form the government to effect mm -hmm. all of the changes. Mm -hmm. majority. Simple majority. All right? At least 21, mm -hmm. right? Um, we are having a general election in, well, the general election is constitutionally due in 2020. I believe it's going to come before. Um, are you... Do you think you will, will be in a position to contest the 41 seats? Yes. We already have 39 caretakers in position building out constituency teams. We've, we're already screening candidates for the local government election that is con constitutionally due next year. We are not like the other political parties that form for a link up and a position. This is a real political organization with depth and breadth and, and an organization that will challenge every single opportunity to bring better leadership to the do country. You, do you believe that those candidates that you all, those caretaker, those caretakers, constituency caretakers are the, are the best? The caliber of candidates we need. So we far. have the best caliber of people now. Our people on the ground are getting to know the voters, the voters getting to know them, they're getting accustomed to them working in the community. There are a lot of things the Progressive Empowerment Party does that people are not aware that this political organization does. We just linked up two um, well-known doctors with a young lady whose entire body is covered in tumors. She's had this condition since she was 16 years old. She's been walking around Trinidad. She's, she's been on the news every couple of years. They make her a story. Nobody helps her. We got her house. And now we're getting her actual medical help. And I'm just giving you that as an example. Philip Alexander, people 
we have heard this nice, pretty talk. Good ideas, great ideas. Um, intelligent people, brilliant, educated, qualified. And um, when you give them an opportunity that they just disappoint. Look at the COP. You are part of the COP. You supported the UNC. I didn't support the UNC. I was part of the Congress of the People. Part of the Congress of the People. You supported Kamala. You liked Kamala somewhat. <sighs> that was, anyway, you, you know, know what? I will leave that in the narrative and, you know, for now. At, at least, at least. At the time, she the, was the best option we had. Right. You and I both know that. Oh, sure. It's and, a fluid situation. And still. It's a fluid situation. And still. For me personally, between, I mean, one union leader said um, uh, 10 bad Rowley is not as bad as one bad Kamala or something of that effect? It, 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 where we need to go as a nation is we need to get more people in the conversation. When the people of Diego Martin have had institutionalized traffic for decades, 30,000 people move into and out of Diego Martin morning and evening. You feel you want people, more people in the conversation? I mean, we. I just, I just I mean, want to make an example. I just want to make an example. I just, just want to make an example. I just want to make an example because you were talking about if we're able to work with other people. Jack Warner was the Minister of Works. I resigned from the Congress of the People when the Congress of the People initially joined with the United National Congress. I resigned in protest because we were fighting the PNM and the UNC as the Congress of the People, if you remember. And in 2007, in that election, it was bruising and brutal. And I didn't think that it was right that we would so easily go back on the same things that we've been saying, that neither of these political organizations should represent the people or be in government. But I also understood deep in my core that Patrick Manning had to be stopped. Plenty of people will forget that Patrick Manning was soaring heights of megalomania. He was test driving his private jet for when he became executive president. And I understood that the Congress of the people at the highest level. Is there anything wrong with an executive president? Had to, that you want to do? There's nothing wrong if it's properly constituted. Right, well, he was. I, don't think you would have done it just we've been we've been sniping at the constitution we've not been actually going into the constitution and fixing the things that need fixing amending what needs to be amended like the fact that you can't fire a member of parliament after you hire a member of parliament that you're stuck with them until there's an election that's wrong if somebody's uh, not fact, delivering the, the fact that you can't fire a member of parliament is one thing but the but quite honestly you are following the model that the people are not even choosing the candidate because you have already put in place 39 caretakers for 39 out of the 41 constituencies. There's no guarantee that those caretakers and will be the candidates, you know. But what they but, are... I mean, okay, will you put somebody there as a caretaker... To build the constituency, yes. It's, that's their it's, job. It's just to build. That's it's their it's job. You, you need, you need, so they, you need they organization not, on the ground. You need there. team captains. You need to be able to bring out the vote. You need to be organized on the ground, communication, finance, and fundraising. You need a lot of machinery for an election. So the caretakers are... What do you are think the, about primary elections? Do you think the people should... The people of the constituency if you should want. If, if, if you want to go down the that party. road, we are very much into that. In fact, our proposal is to abolish local government, abolish the regional health authorities, abolish how the police service is set up, create something called the Constituency Board of Supervisors, a supervisor for public works, public utilities, health, education, and security. 41 of those so responsible... 41 republics? In a, in a way, yes. Give the constituencies more autonomy. At budget time, let the constituency say, we need $800 million to take care of everything. And then why do you want to act as a tax? Yes, now, let me finish this. Because this is a little complicated, and I want the listeners to understand this. That if each constituency sends a breakdown budget of everything that they need, that they need done, roads to fix, bridges, streets, um, parks, whatever, um, they're going to be responsible for their own water, their own water distribution. They're going to be responsible for managing their own schools, so maintaining your own schools. And if you put that in place, when, when a minister of finance reads the budget, he will be able to read a detailed budget in a perfect world. When he comes to Diego Martin West, 
he should sit down. Yeah, but it sounds good. And the member of it, parliament, no, 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 you can't just say it, it sounds, sounds good. good. But how come, I mean, each constituency may not have a supply of water, so are you responsible for your because you are. water? Because you are, you are, because we need to put in place now... You're responsible for generating your own electricity? De not generating your own electricity, but where water is concerned, because there are different ways that you can gather and distribute water. Purification is now almost... You, it's a no-brainer. You could do multiples of different ways of, of purifying water makers at a micro level. Diego Martin West should be benefiting from the aquifers in Chagaramas. They don't. The people of Rich Plain have no water tonight. But the largest aquifer in Trinidad right now is in Chagaramas and Tucker Valley Road. Yeah, but you, know, you, do, you don't need all of that. While that sounds good... God, why, can't, why, can't, that, why can't we, we say... Need, why can't we say... Why can't we say we that the quality... Fix, what we need to do is to fix the 50% of the lines that are burst. No, no, waste. no. We're transmitting water too far. We're transmitting water too far. If Diego Martin West could get all of its water, because they, there's this joke that Diego Martin West is, Diego Martin is the bathroom at Trinidad Tobago. Sun shining everywhere else, but rain falling in Diego Martin. We could catch all the water we need. We could retain all the water we need. This country is a joke. We build concrete rivers and drains to catch the bounty of rainfall that we get every year and wash it out to the sea. I want to ask you a question. If we were storing that water for the six months of dry season, purifying and distributing that water within a three-mile radius, wouldn't the operational cost be smaller? Wouldn't it be easier to maintain the pipe network? Wouldn't it be easier to guarantee a 24-hour water supply? Philip. Yes or no? Philip. I'll ask you a question. Because that is the type of progressive policies we have. Philip, sounds good. But how are you going to be able to get over the hurdle of the issues that the people have. Philip, in Trinidad and Tobago, and you should know that, in Trinidad and Tobago, based on our political culture, great messages are lost. Yeah, that's true. We love a charismatic leader. We look at leaders. Mm -hmm. I wanna, people, uh, people are challenging your style. People think that you are a racial person, especially with that statement that was made to Kijan Haynes. That I think he has you with the equal opportunity, you know, he took you to the equal opportunity. The media broadcast that is at the equal commission. Op opportunity commission, but we've heard nothing from that. We have a battery of lawyers waiting to answer them. God, the rule of thumb, and I put this out for people to know, the rule of thumb that people use in their conversation every day, a lot of people don't know that the rule of thumb means, and it came from long ago, the width of your thumb was the size of the rod you were legally allowed to use to beat your wife. A lot of the things that we have now in conversation are inherited from long time sayings. To call somebody a Judas, a sellout, a house negro, same thing. That's what it is. It's a term. And the sentence that was written, and it was deliberately written a certain way, so that he understood that it was he and the media, because Kijan Haynes is all over the media, all over the social media, boasting that TV6, when, they, when he was there, he was for certain that they were blocking me and my message. That's not the role of media. That's not the role of media. Media's job is to protect the people from the government. But our media is in bed with the government turned and turned its guns on the people. But if you, are the go if you form the government, they might end up in bed with you. How are you going to avoid that? Our policy is to arms length the boardroom from the newsroom. But all of this media is changing. How people get their information now is in flux. By the time three years pass, because I know that you will remember things like MSN Messenger and ICQ, those were the original social media, they change again. The game is changing, it's constantly changing. And how people get their information is changing. Right now, the media doesn't have the power or the reach that it thought it had, but it, that it thinks it has. But it still, it still has a very important role to play in Facebook terms of, told me in today, terms of verifying. Facebook told me today. In terms of verifying. Facebook told me. No, not in terms of verifying. The media puts out more fake news than social media. And we have enough examples of that.
Aren't, and you, I have, aren't you exaggerating now that the, that the traditional media puts out more, more fake news, news than, social than social media? media. You want an example? Miss, Give me an example. You want an Miss example? Yes. My battle with the media started with a fellow by the name of Samson Nanton. Samson Nanton, at the behest of whoever his political controllers was, did in an outright lie, an assassination of character on the Jericho Project. Now, the Jericho Project is a charity organization that I founded 25 years ago. And all it does is help poor people, disabled people, homeless people, orphans. That's what it does. We don't seek media for that. We keep that quiet. Samson Nanton played a well-played game. And I must admit, in those days, I was politically naive. I had to learn that not every skin teeth is a smile. And Samson's interview was to turn around and create outright lies about this organization that's never ha had a bank account. It's never gotten a dollar from a government. It's just served its members, worked together for 25 years. Like this week on here, the Progressive Empowerment Party just followed on the same track that the Jericho Project set up to feed the homeless. That's why when you pull up in town with a truck full of roti paid for by PEP supporters from overseas, they knew us and they were custom. So they just lined up and took the phone and they were happy to get it. But Samson Nanton tried to attack that organization to attack me. And then I realized then that the media cannot be trusted in Trinidad Tobago. When Golderly Bruce called me on the phone over the same Kijan Haynes nonsense, I gave her her interview. It was edited to suit CNC 3s agenda. And that is their style. And I know that. But I record every conversation that I have. So if I ever have to challenge what CNC3 News and Golderly Bruce put out into the public space, I can. But I want them to know, and today I shared, Facebook told me today that we get 10 million likes and views on my page. That's a lot of media in a country of 1.4 million people. We have a reach. I, I understand what you're saying. And we saying. will challenge. I understand what you're saying, but... To he, cite, mm -hmm. but to cite... Come back to the racist thing. I want to come back to that. Because no, I want to ask, Kijan Haynes has a battery I'll of lawyers, back. and I'd like to find out but to say, who's paying those lawyers. But to say, to say the traditional media puts out more fake news because of an experience that you have had... No, that's just an example. Right. I asked you if you wanted right. an example. Right. You give me an example. But you I give you another example. Right. But you made a statement. I give you multiple examples. Every night, every night, Traditional media gives the news broadcasts. During the day, they give news broadcasts. Radio give news broadcasts. You cannot tell me and make me believe what you are saying. No, you can't lump all. Traditional you can't lump. media. Radio is not. No, radio has become. Radio talk is traditional radio, media. No, talk radio has evolved radio into. Radio news. No, news. Twelve. Power one or two news. I-95 news. What we talk about news. as traditional media in Trinidad Tobago is press, you press, TV, that hybrid. Uh, the, 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 the one Caribbean media model, the Sabda News Network model, that. That's what we talk about. Um, they put out hours of news a week. How many of those stories are fake? When you read the stories, you would be able to tell. I want to ask you. Anyhow. No, no, let's, no. Let's not belabor if that be, that no, no we, it's not about belaboring the point. Today, I had to put out that the, uh, the people of Faisabad haven't gotten mail for seven weeks because the Faisabad TT Post office has been shut down and it's apparently the union doesn't want the workers to go in there. So the people of Faisabad not getting mail. How do people get news? How do they get coverage? The amount of people that come to me on a daily basis after they go to the traditional news media and get no response. How do they get covered? If it doesn't dovetail with the don't media's tell me agenda. They have their agenda. They have an agenda. But don't For tell me Mohammed, it's fake news. But it's fake news. For Zee Mohammed to, ad admitted it. Kijan Haynes admitted it. For Zee Mohammed in an interview with me on TV6 one morning admitted to the country that the news media has an agenda and I'm not part of it. Well, we know that. But God, you can't we, excuse that. We know. I'm, I'm not excusing it. The but purpose, not, but, but what, the purpose all I, all, of the I disagree, state. however. I disagree with you, however, on the point that they put out more fake, news. Out more fake news okay, well. than social media. But we need to take a break and we'll be right back. <laughs>
You're listening to Breaking the Cycle with God Christopher and a special guest. Oh, yes. Hey, we invite you to tune in tomorrow. 10.30 to 11 a.m. for our health and wellness segment featuring Zach Cannon and Stanley Hoyt. Learn how you can live a better, healthier lifestyle through stem cell therapy, sleep and skin improvement, increased energy and physical strength, stress and strain relief, mental and emotional boost. Welcome to the best days of your life with Lamy 9. And of course, tap in the Expo under the white tent opposite Medford gas station in Shibonas. Get up to 80% off all new. Containers with the latest variety of furniture, handicraft, garments, footwear, jewelry, and many more from around the world. Spend $1,000 or more for a chance to spin and win up to $500 instantly. Check them out tomorrow, 11 a.m. till 9 p.m. At entry is absolutely free. There's more on the other side of these. By public demand, Barbiga Expo is now closing on July 16th. Yes, you have just a few more days to visit Barbiga Expo, located at the white tent opposite Medford Gas Station, Shibona. Massive sale now on. Get up to 80% off. Bring it in closer. I have an external on my head. On link or credit card for a chance to spend to win up to $5 million instantly. We cater for the entire family. Don't miss out on this opportunity to visit the best of the best. Barbiga Expo, now closing on July 16th. Located at the white tent opposite Medford Gas Station, Shibona. Massive sale now on. Get up to 80% off. Get up to 80% off. Say what this group is politics? News by one or two of the groundbreaking series in yeah. focus, <laughs> where we examine the burning issues facing TNT. In focus, all day this coming Wednesday. Nobody party, that's that's how plenty people know about the parties, only social media. There's been a media blackout. We've had 19 public meetings. News power 102. Well attended public meetings that the media have been invited to and did not attend. You were you were the producer on the show? Defense attorney for me, Ali. News power in focus. Anti gang legislation 2018. Only on news power 102. Empowering you. Every detail checked. Indeed. Every ride prepared. They can't get another boy. Exactly. Twenty people that frustrated. Sunday, twenty second July, at the Center of Excellence, McCoy. This the Sunshine Series. This is the hole right here. Now you can touch it right here. The hole is free. Right there. That's the microphone. And the artist to make you jump. Kids are 80 dollars, adults 120. There's nothing to do about the free. Tickets are out, so get them now. At Francis so are people saying they're not here? Queen and Henry yeah, Street, Fort of Spain, Prince City Mall. Everybody Kukula, asked them. Arima, Larry's Fashion, Chiguanas, Burger King, Giraffe, Fats International, Arima, and Prince City Mall. And at Boom 94's offices, 88 to 90, Abercrombie Street, Fort of Spain. The Sunshine Cereals, Summer Kids, Jamboree. The most fun you've ever had before awaits. Sunday, 22nd July, at the Center of Excellence, Makoya. The Sunshine Series. Summer Kids Jamboree. Sponsored by V8. Juicy Blue Waters and Blue Waters Cran. Little Caesars Pizza, Burger King. And Tear Drags. Okay, somebody said that's good. That is good? Yeah. Some people might have... Some people might have difficulty with it. That's what I glance. Uh, Read number 19. That seems to be a very popular one. <laughs> with the youth. You say we voting for y'all just on that. You're listening to Power 102. Yes, thank you very much and welcome back to Breaking the Cycle with me, God Christopher, right here on Power on 2.1 FM every Monday from uh, 7 to 9 p.m. And uh, in studio tonight is Mr. Philip Alexander. He is the political leader of the Progressive Empowerment Party and we have his, um, with us also his, uh, the PRO of the PEP, that is uh, Ms. Shanice Leomon Creaky. Uh, welcome back, all right? Thank you. Um, Mr. Alexander, I see you have here in your policy at a glance that you will be having no more mega contractors. What does that really mean? Tell us about that. How are you going to accomplish that? Well, when I was explaining how the
constituency board of supervisors work and you ask me if we're creating 41 republics it's 41 autonomous constituencies and the idea is for for infrastructural work to be done in the constituency it should be done by companies registered in that constituency and by workers from that constituency so that we don't end up with one company doing everything so what about if 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 they don't have the equipment to do the job then they'll do then they'll do subcontracting but the main contract should go it is a way of involving is a way of encouraging um, entrepreneurial development in the contracting business throughout the country you, we when, have when a certain you say they will do subcontracting let's say love until it's over we have a big project to do mm -hmm. whatever it is paving of some let's say building of some kind of a highway overpass or something like that mm -hmm. nobody in the constituency I'm just saying, let's say nobody in the constituency has the type of equipment and finance. No, you're talking about as a, as national company, infrastructure there. Overpass and overpass, that's national infrastructure. But so we're talking... Say, if let we, us say in our constituency... Building schools? No. Let mm -hmm. us say in our constituency... Okay, the Lady Young Road passes through our community. Right. And let us say we wish to expand it and we wish to do some works to it. You could do that. All right? Yeah. And the, the contractors in the area do not have the equipment and the machinery and the finance, the capital, to do so. You gonna let me answer? You gonna let me answer? Well, I'm asking you the question. There are many the contractors answer. that exist today that when governments come to office are not even in existence. There are contractors who have been given contracts in this country that don't own a backhoe. The door on a truck. But, fact, but that is something you disagree with. All I'm saying to you is the, the reason for giving the contracts to companies within the constituency is to make sure that workers within the constituency benefit from the development of the country. Half of Trinidad's trucks right now, much of our heavy equipment is in Guyana, you know. Let me explain something to you. When you see Calco, not so much Junior Sami, because he wealthy now, but when you see a lot of these overnight companies, Calco and Kusals for a while, when they start up and they put their sticker on the truck door that this is now a Calco truck, peel off that sticker and see who that truck was working for before. People buy trucks and work with contractors. Contractors' job is to get the contract. They don't own all the backhoes and all the excavators. They don't own all the trucks. They hire an engineer. I know a guy who came down here to work as an expat with Enron that stayed to work with a big contractor. And because of him, they got into much bigger work because of his capabilities and capacities. So how are they? So, okay. So I'm saying to you okay. that a contracting, contract. firm, a contracting firm, the first contract is the management contract. That's the first contract. So expertise to, de to deliver on that is usually contained in the scope of works. This is what we want done. So you will know what expertise you need to bring to bear. But yes, there may well be situations where in the constituency where you want to do certain works, there are no contractors. That was mostly for, because I found it ridiculous. The other day we heard that they vacated an entire bid that was supposedly properly done and gave the two contracts to, to renovate two schools to Junior Sami. Yeah, Why is, is it, Junior is Sami at the level of Junior Sami playing at renovating schools when inside the constituency there are workers and companies that can be renovated and building schools? I am not talking overpasses and boring through tunnels. There are national contractors and massive contractors for that. But for all of the infrastructural <laughs> development... No more mega contractors. No more mega contractors. You have a situation where you have sidewalks and pavements and bridges to be built. Unless it exceeds the expertise and the skill sets available in the constituency, give them first preference. Let me give another example that dovetails with that. There are a lot of business, public um, sector business in Trinidad and Tobago that is carried out by people who sit down all day. Like when you go to TN Tech to query a bill and pay a bill and stuff, you're dealing with people who sit down all day. Why we can't reserve those for people in wheelchairs? I mean, that just seems common sense. They're confined to be sitting anyway. The person that you're going to be putting there to do the job has to be trained anyway. Why don't you put the two together? So you lift that subset. 
and it's looking at that. We create big companies in Trinidad and Tobago that we really don't need. If after, if after, and this is if you if you will be able, or if you are able to field 41 constituencies, con uh, uh, candidates, sorry, in Trinidad and Tobago in the 2020 general election. Let us say you are a, a reasonable show. Let's say overall, I'm just saying, you gather 60,000 votes overall, entire elections. In this, the COP in its, in its heyday, they gathered, I think, 150,000 or so. Let's say you got a half of that, 75,000 um, 75, votes. That's the PP. What will you do? You lost. Not a damn seat for PP. Will you fall up? What can you do if you lose? What can you do? A political party cannot continue to exist after that. If the people reject it, we are supposed to say, okay, you don't want this. We are working very hard. We put out millions of words of information, thousands of hours of live videos and interviews. We walk the constituencies. We do public rallies every month. This is not an, this is not an election season. Every single Saturday, we invite the entire country to our headquarters to break bread with us and have a meeting from 12 noon every single Saturday. And we've been doing that since we formed. So we're doing all of that. What do we do after losing an election that we couldn't do before? Because we're not going to bribe and, and pay for votes. We're not, going to, we're not going to vote a pad. We're not going to buy audiences to attend the rallies. If we can't reach into the minds of Trinidad and Tobago and appeal to them to want a better nation, what else is there to do? But what if we win? What if we win? What if you lose? What I, I, will you do? I just answered that question. Up? Will the PEP cease to exist? From my point of view, as the leader, I will immediately step down. Because I would have taken the party into a, a loss, into a defeat. So that is expected. That is convention in first world countries. And I have absolutely zero problem with that. Because if you know me at all, I don't fight down the office. And if the people were to say, Philip, we started at zero. You have 75,000 warm bodies who voted for us. We would like you to stay on. What will the, you do? The Progressive Empowerment Party, I am sure, I am absolutely certain, and those 75,000 warm bodies will continue on. But Philip Edward Alexander, as leader, my term would have come to an end there. And if there are, I, I doubt if there are internal elections to come, if I would put my name back in, because I think... If you cannot take the party to victory, step back. Let somebody else have a chance. Somebody else might do a better job than me. Where you learn that philosophy? But that's convention, that's Who's Westminster. Convention? But that's the same Westminster system that we follow. But they ask them to hold on and they decide to hold on. That's up to the person. But you are saying you will not. It, it comes down to your own integrity. I think, God, God, I want you to understand that I am working at this practically 24-7. Do you know that's a disappointment to a lot of people? I, no, because we have two more years for elections. Trinidadians can't continue to be waiting for a savior. I am nobody's savior. What we are is a well-organized group of people that come to you and say, everything that is wrong in this nation could fix. Any issue that you ask me about that is wrong in Trinidad and Tobago right now, I could tell you exactly how it should be fixed. And I didn't make it up. Our education plan came from Finland. Our shipping model comes from Singapore. We understand success leaves clues and go where success exists and copy that. In Trinidad and Tobago, our security border policy is straight out of New York City. Philip Alexander. Garth, if we do not win, Philip Edward Alexander, Philip. and I will continue to serve the party. I will continue to assist in the party. You would continue to serve the party. If the party needs my assistance and expertise in But if they need your leadership. That is not leadership. Leadership takes people where they need to go. If the population, the voting population, decides to reject... Whose what? philosophy is that? For tonight, let it be mine. Just for tonight. But I'm saying to you, 
if all this work that I do, we do as a party, the people reject it at election time. If you could have a country. Your PR is here. Just let me just. As soon, right. as, you, as, soon as you finish, mm -hmm. as soon as you finish, mm -hmm. I would love to hear. No problem. What she has but to say. But after 56 years of mismanagement, corruption, and abuse, trillions of dollars lost, a country broken. I mean, we're literally a banana republic, narco state, failed nation. Nothing works in Trinidad and Tobago. If we come to you and tell you that there is a plan and a solution and a way forward for everything, that the courts could work, the police service could work, public service could work, that we could solve traffic and we could solve crime, and if we show you and demonstrate and we bring people to you who are experts in their field and you reject that, why would I think, why would I have the hubris to think that I should hold on when the people have said, Ms. Leomon, uh, quickly. Yeah. Yes. What do you think about <clears throat> Philip's response to that question? If the PEP, after the 2020 general elections, mm -hmm. would have garnered uh, 75,000 votes, lost, not a damn seat, mm -hmm. will you continue? He said, no, he's not going to continue. If your membership were to ask you to continue, no, I will not continue. How do you feel as a member and as a PRO, as the PRO of the PEP? Well, first of all, I would respect Philip's decision, and I'll tell you why. If Philip is of the opinion that having led the party to a 2020 election and the general population rejects the party, it not only rejects the party, but it also rejects the, the, the leadership, the executive, Correct. everybody. Exactly. Now, I want to lighten this a little bit to the Prime Minister who stepped down after the British voted to get out of um, for, for the Brexit situation. He literally stepped it, stepped it down, right? Because he felt that he was, he was very sure that the people would have voted to stay in the European Union. But they didn't. And he stepped down, and now you have a female prime minister. He was already a, he was already the prime minister, yes, and but no, hold on. he was already the prime minister, and it was a show of a loss of confidence in him. Right, Philip but is not a prime minister. I understand that. So it's not a show of a loss of confidence in Philip. Okay, but let me come come back to my point again. Mm -hmm. The thing is, based on as Philip again said, it's a Westminster model. When something does not work or if it is that you are in a position of uh, authority and this, uh, you, you don't, um, the party does not win or you, take you responsibility. fail, you have to take responsibility. You do. Right, it's like an organization. If the CEO, in, if, it does, if the company fails, the CEO has to step down and give somebody else a chance to bring the company why, back Why up. don't you agree with that right? as, a, as I, a position? I, I don't understand why you wouldn't agree with that. Because, that if the party because, fails. Because, because, Messi kicked a penalty and he threw it away. <laughs> and he kicked a penalty after and scored. And he scored. Okay, but he's not Messi should step down, but the coach should. Okay. And if you're talking football, the coach should yeah, step because, down. Yeah, because Argentina should have done a lot better in this World Cup. And they all and their technical staff and their coaching always let them down. So yes, that makes the point. And imagine God Christopher is in the Progressive Empowerment Party and you're there and you have all of these bright ideas and you have passion for country too and you're a patriot too and you want to, to, to have your, a try at taking the organization forward. But Philip Edward if for some reason I fail to take the party into government and I don't step down, then this becomes the Philip Edward Party and I don't want mm -hmm. that. I want this to be an organization that lives long, that lives beyond what the me. organization says, Philip, we understand. We are going to do a post-mortem, and after the post-mortem, Philip, we don't think you did that the proper way, or what have you, the party didn't do that, we should have done that, 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 that. You were the leader, you take responsibility, okay, fine. But we still have faith in you, and it is not so much you, we think, but it's the people. The country didn't. The God country is, didn't end up. God is God is so sweet. Yeah, me arguing against him in support of me. The country God, didn't. The country God, didn't. You're, Philip, you're correct. The country didn't take five years. How long the political your parties in? Um, seventeen months. Seventeen months. 
Trinidad and Tobago didn't take 17 months seriously to say that they are in Jamaica. You're correct. It's not going to take 17, I, 34 months. I, I agree. To just change. God, I agree with you. So why would you because take Trinidad that? Because you, you have already disappointed a lot of that's people. That's not true. Trinidadians get to see people of integrity. People who are willing to say that this is not... I'm not in this for you job. You could say it. You could say, God, okay, fine. God, this, we're not fighting. That's integrity. We're not, we're not fighting. But it is integrity. That's the definition of integrity. And being able to take responsibility, as Janice right. said. Take, take responsibility. I have no problem with you stepping down and the saying, captain you know what? I have, has I, a role. I have disappointed. I have failed. I didn't take you to victory. I never have a problem with that. But if the people were to say, come on. I honestly will tell them, I appreciate it. I watched Al Gore when there was the challenge. And what will you do? Go on from another party? No. Do what? I will resign, no, I'll, I'll, I've been in charity for a long time. I've been a social activist for longer than I've been in politics. I love that. And the other people who you were mentoring and training. I, and I, I, but as I said to you, you, but I said to you, I would stay there. I would assist. I have no problem with that. I have absolutely no problem with that. But I believe that people need to see leaders who are willing to, to have to have the courage to step back if their leadership doesn't take us where we need to go. I find we're dwelling on the if we lose model a little too long. <laughs> but <laughs> okay, okay. Do you really think that you will win? God, 16th of July is going to send an earthquake through Trinidad's political directorate. Felicia Hula is going to win Belmont East. Christophe Samlal, if he doesn't win Barataria, he will come very close. This party has done work on the ground that resonates with the people at a level that has never been done in politics before. To compare us to the Congress or the people or anything else is to, is to be, I guess, fishing for something to, to be either fish or fowl. But we're something else. We're a new thing. We're people politics. We're trying to change the way politics is done. Our organization is so democratic that our meetings give me headaches. Everybody has a say, and they use it on every issue. The party is run like that, and it is growing forward at a fantastic rate because the people who come on board know that, you know what? You don't have to agree with everything we say. You can have your say, but at the end of the day, the party has a policy or a program. We have over overriding philosophies. What makes you believe so certain that the PP and Felicia Holder is going to win Belmont? I walked Belmont East with Felicia Holder. I've spoken to people in Belmont East. I, 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 I sat on Piggott's Corner. You are live on Power 102.1 FM and we're going to open the lines in a little bit. For people they interact with you. I like that. So you are live on on um, Power One Two Point One FM, and you are live. The world, Facebook. I tell every night. I tell every night. The world is always have now, access to me. Now, if again, you're making a prediction. If she were to lose, will you step down? That's not my election we won't will you ask her to step down as the candidate will you not put her up as a candidate in Belmont ever again or will you not put her up as a or will you make her a candidate for another constituency that's a different thing she's not the leader of the party she's the candidate for Belmont East and possibly yeah possibly maybe if the if the voters in Belmont reject not just the party but the candidate we put up we have to go back to the drawing board. I mean, there's no reflection on her as a person. Felicia Holder, when you speak with her, when, when she sits in a room, she owns the room. The woman is brilliant. The people of Belmont East has never had the opportunity to have a counselor at the level she operates at. If they put her in the Port of Spain City Corporation, that corporation, business as usual, will be over, you know. Felicia Holder will make sure that what the people of Belmont East are supposed to get, they get. Oh, yes. Okay. That is the chairman of the Progressive Empowerment Party. Yeah? She wears two hats. War on poverty. Mm -hmm. Make universal home ownership a reality and job creation a top priority. Encourage foreign direct investment in labor intensive business uh, partnerships. Set medium term national job for all master plan. Tell us about your job for all master plan. 
we've never had a government that understood the power of the, 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 the labor resource of Trinidad and Tobago. If we had invited, created um, duty-free, tax-free zones and invited companies here, because of our location between Central, South, and North America, we could have been doing assembly work here. India just did it. In three decades, India moved from the world's slum to one of the most powerful nations in the world. India has one of the largest economies in the world. Three decades ago, it was a slum. India right now has the largest middle class in the world. There are more middle class people living in India than there are people all together in America and all of Europe. India owns more IT, holds more IT patents than any other country in the world. All because they came up with a business model that would put the people to work. Why aren't we doing joint ventures? Why aren't we encouraging the Samsungs and the Apples and the Microsofts of this world to come and set, set up base in Trinidad and Tobago? Why not Levi jeans? A 34-34-501 jeans. For the it's people cut. That work in sweatboxes. Not sweatboxes, my friend. It starts somewhere. When they started in India, people used to joke India was the call center of the world. They used to laugh when you call Lotus One Two Three or you call Microsoft Word, somebody answering the phone in India. It starts there. But then you give those people training opportunities for them to advance themselves. Step one is to get the job underway. Bring the companies here. Let the companies set up here. You must, or the government has a responsibility to create jobs. There must be more jobs than people. That's the role of government. The well-being of the citizens is the function of government. You know. It is the purpose for government. It's the reason we have a government. If the people didn't have needs, we would not need a government. And that's the truth. Housing, jobs, education, healthcare, water, affordable food. You get those things dealt with. The government can do anything else they want after that. We are supposed to diversify into cruise ship tourism. Tobago is perfectly poised for that. You could build five, ten joint venture marina operations in Tobago, public-private sector partnerships, invite Disney, Monarch, Caribbean Cruises, all of them to set up operations in Tobago. Cruise ship tourism is the fastest growth tourism in the world right now. Stay on cruise tourism, which sails from Germany to Tobago and park up for three days. That's going away. And people enjoy themselves in Tobago, get back on the ship and go back. That type of cruise, um, tourism is the fastest growing tourism in the world. All you need to build is marinas. And you could put a million feet on the ground. Shipping. Dubai didn't make their money in oil and gas. Dubai made their money in shipping. Trinidad is poised and located outside of the hurricane belt. Why is the PNM and the UNC not doing these things? I don't know. I can't answer you. It seems to be that these parties are driven by their finances. What their finances want done is what gets done. So you, your party has no finances? No, that is not the question. And our finances are our members. And we just had a curry queue this Saturday. We had a barbecue in four weeks. We don't stop begging. So you're going to fight a general election with curry queue and barbecue? With curry queue and barbecue and, 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 fine, and our members' That's donations. Right. We have overseas time. members who commit to pay a 50 US a month and a 100 US a month. And that adds up. We have a lot of foreign base members. We have a lot of foreign base members. Let's start taking some calls, all right? Hello, good evening. Hello. Hello, good evening. I love my country. That's my friend. Yes, Marky. Marky, we're away from the radio. Yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Yeah, good night to your family. Yeah, Marky. Good night. One thing I like, first step on the action if you would like to be the Prime Minister of the Rand, they go about five times, and he didn't give a direct answer. Because he asked what Prime Minister, and they do not say what we need is management. The people that man in this man is good. And so I like to uh, you yeah, coming here, Prime Minister, you're coming to manage the country because that really means. And I will say all the best because I is our PNM, but I feel the time pass. I believe this is it here. And I would like somebody, either you or you, and to go with it because we have time with them. Because that is not um, PNM that I know. So I cannot support them. I know what to say. I might be from Dr. William D. So this is not fair so I like somebody to come up and move them. I know all in here, and I'm talking bold and brave. All this, all this not fair is a counterfeit, starting out there, a localized. Thank you very much, and good night. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Not last. Hello. Oh. 
Hello, good, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Philip Alexander, and his colleague there. Good evening. Yeah. Good evening. Look how my young man from Nancy Beach at Carnage, 43 years old, married, has two young kids. I would like to see my country go to the level of, with the, all the technology we see now, we'll see what does happen outside. And I would ask myself, why it is my country can't be like that outside? While I hear you, I support the idea you're trying to promote your party and gain this country on the right foot. But like telling the guys in the program before yesterday, we have a serious mental issue in this country. A serious mental issue. The rich, the poor, everybody, everybody in this country just like a don't care. Nobody really business. As long as they could get to wine and dine and you know mean half the, the money and not this to be like all this when I look at how things in this country run, because we had laws, we have, we, I can use two examples as I said today. We have a sitting judge, we have a sitting senator, pay the system for driving under the influence. And those are the ones we have asked the young ones to aspire to, to look up to, to look into factors are like them. And these are the ones that are us. So what do you want the man and the ground to do? We need a serious mental revolution in this place. Understand? I mean, Philip, you have all the ideas, you know, you have all the ideas that I, looking for other young man because like I say I have two young kids and I want the best of them. But in this country people in really business. People really do business as long as they could once they can have what they desire at their disposal, they don't care about what going after. They don't care. No. Nobody Th wants to really put the right foot forward. Today we see with all all this money this country have all this billion dollars funded. We still have a court a club court system. We haven't seen any outside in America for different things women get charged for their public but are racist and they put use technology to at least help the system the social system. We hear I hear the age talking a whole different different thing they got to do today. That ain't changing the attitude of the young men today. That ain't changing the attitude. Uh, so when I'm hungry and, 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 and starving and not to put on the back, you figure you want to hear ideas what the better chance they go. He's looking for the next plate of food. If he can't get to look at him, attack somebody and he can be a next statistic in this country. We, the citizens of the state, we need to wake up. We keep arguing about politics and race and this and that. As you say, when all these politicians reach out, all of them had a big hefty pension to get enough. And we still like carbon and barrel fighting. While I support you, Philip, I'm a supporter of the UNC, but I support your idea. I support your idea, but we, the citizens of this country, we need to really wake up. Something is wrong with our mental. We know how we operate, we know how we treat. The rich, the poor, you can see it. I don't see it. I can sit in here to see. I don't see the same rich driving on the settler phone, the drinking. They do what they want. They do what they want. And when they get home, the system hold them. Because of who they are, they're able to make phone call or probably spend money. And they walk in my way. But me, who's a little small boy, a little small man, and I'm not me, I go into the whole grind. The whole brain is going to be able to take a law to the rich and law to the poor. This country, gentlemen, to tell you the truth, this country is a fair country. Thank you very much. Greater than mighty God that have us functioning right now, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Paula, Councillor. Hello, good evening. Hello? Good night to you, Zach. Yeah, you have none, Paula. Hello? Yes, good evening. King's League, yes, go yes, ahead. Yes, good night to you, Zach. Mm -hmm. And I want to say good night to Philip Alexander and good night to the PRO. Good night. Good night. I, got, um, I must say, wonderful program, as always. You know, I mean, you know, you bring a, 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 a variety, something we call juicy on the radio, something where what, what we pay attention to on Monday from 7 to 9. I support this program. God, well, after listening to the leader there of the PEP party, I ask, where is the hope? Where is the idea? Where is the vision? And the question to ask the leader, do you think that ah, ah, other party in this country will solve the solution? A pause. Oh, you answer him. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. <laughs> Kola, we have 56 years of failed government. So, I mean, I mean, I use the analogy of a woman in a in an abusive relationship. First man beaten, second man beaten, third man might be buying flowers and bringing chicken and chips. You can't lose hope. And that's the common thread in the, the two calls before. People hopeless in this country, we bring hope. We are people who are daring to dream again and say things could fix. This country not a stay like this. This country easy to run and easy to fix. Any problem that you think that this country has, we could fix it. So don't lose hope, my friend. But, but, so 
Philippines and Benzina, what what difference you could bring than these two and a political party were done sink and marry to the people of this country? What 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 hope? What is it different that, that the, the people could illustrate to you and come to your party? Answer him, right? There are examples that I can give you. Um, take for example, take for example, you are a law-abiding police officer working for the Trinidad Tobago Police Service, and all you hearing all around you is that the police corrupt, and the police is criminal, and the police is gangs. You hear that nonsense from government ministers? You hear that from the head of the PCA? And you are a law-abiding police officer, and you are a patriot. And nobody in government to date, 56 years, could have taken it upon themselves to do the, the required steps to clean up the police service. We spoke to the New York City Police Department Internal Affairs Division, and they've guaranteed that they could clean up Trinidad Tobago Police Service in six months and get all the rogue elements out of it so that proper, decent, law-abiding officers could then take up the mantle and the responsibility of protecting and serving Trinidad Tobago. The Parliament writes law. All it takes is a law. Why haven't they done anything as yet to clean up the police service? Just that as an example. Two more, two more questions, and I'll leave it. Um, Philip, why so long we stay in the point, uh, Commissioner, and what you will do better to, to that we could have a, a, a more effect, Commissioner, or, or a speed leader? That because it's been too long that every minute they're going to, because I believe that the people of this country also vote for the Commissioner. And, and also, Philip, um, what do you think about um, the people of this country voting for a speaker of the house that are having a, a party? If, if you get elected, do you change that laws of, of the, let the people point the commissioner? Because let me see four or five police, let me see what work they do for the last 15 years, 10 years, and let the people judge on that. And what do you think about the speaker having the people choose the speaker of the house? Philip, I thank you. God, thank, thank you very much. Thank you, my friend. God, you, you have a very high level of caller. I'm telling you that. Those, those three calls alone. That last caller, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, should be elected independent of the government. It shouldn't come out to the government as one. Two, with regards to the Commission of Police, of course it must be a meritocracy. Of course it must come out of the police service. But you must have a functional internal affairs unit keeping the police service honest and on track. You must have an unblemished record and over the course of a of a career of meritorious service and you and you get your masters in criminology, maybe a law degree. Because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a commissioner of police that we could respect. The commissioner of police should have the same tax free status as a senator. We have senators who just come, who bring nothing to the table. And the commissioner of police should have benefits above and beyond that. So I think that if we establish a policy that we encourage and reward excellence in the police service, that's what we will get. Okay. Next call. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Yes. Good evening to the moderator, Susan Cora. Good evening to Philip Alexander yeah. and Lucy Aru. Good evening. Good evening. Philip Alexander, uh, a fast tracker. I know that we will be, we have a humongous staff, almost impossible, but the God all things possible. A fast track in next five years, Philip Alexander, booms and booms, and the, the prime minister. What would Philip Alexander do with respect to the, uh, the social injustice to this country? That is number one. And, and, and I'm making allusions to, for example, the situation with. We see sometimes, we see it has been a mushroom now. The prison, the prison, the prison officer scenario. Prison, the prisoner, sorry. We have this big security firm. I'm sure he's a financer. He, he has this uh, transport, transporting people from the from Aruka to Port of Spain. They, every single day. Last question. Yes, no, call on. What guarantee Philip Alexander would have that he wouldn't be cocooned into um, this the, the, the political, the uh, oligarchy, the, the financial, having him, having Philip Alexander like a puppet of a string, like what's going on in UNC and PNM. I, I close now. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you're listening off here. Yes, you will. I am in court with the owner of that transport company dealing with the ambulance contract. He also has the ambulance contract. The same person who has the transport company. I 
I'm the person who put it into the public space. I am the person who keeps quote, quoting Secretary General of the Prison Officers Association, Hercules, who's been asked, Hercules is his name, who's been asking, who asked, and it was published in the media that he did not know how this contract was awarded. He said his actual words were, it came like a thief in the night. And I am the person who's been saying, why not build the courthouses adjacent to the jail and move the magistrate and not the criminals? But I want to go further because our, our jails right now, we have people in jail that should not be in jail who've been convicted of nothing but poverty. They can't afford a lawyer. They can't afford bail. They're stuck in the system that if they were convicted, they would have served time and left already. They're still there waiting trial. We need a government that has heart for people who understands. And I'll tell you something, eh? Trinidadians just treat arrest like conviction. And it's two different things, you know. It's two different things entirely. You know, somebody's arrested and charged for a matter. If they're entitled to bail, if they can't raise bail, the state has a responsibility to them. To have people languishing in prison with no end of their term in sight is a human right. Being strangled by the parasitic oligarchy of That one. Years. That one. If, this, if that caller goes on my Facebook and pays attention to what we've been saying, it is Philip Edward Alexander and the Progressive Empowerment Party that has been raising that issue, that has been challenging the oligarchy control of the country, that has been calling for government to operate like a rising tide that lifts all boats. Our policies, our first 100 days include... find out if Philip Alexander got water for Ridge Plain or some one of those areas and fixed the highway, that was his idea on doing that and, and it was done after all the years of Rowley being there and all the other fellas from PNN and he, his idea helped out so much people he, and he wasn't in government, imagine if he goes in there, what will happen? And on top of that he is the man getting all the pressure um, of being in court, being sued, and he's fighting for, for us Trinidadians on some ambulance issue, on not being on time and things like that. This man goes to court by himself, fighting for us, and using his money paying lawyers. So imagine what's going on here. And we Trinidadians are giving this man talk. I will vote for this man any day. Anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that caller. And don't get vexed. What, a, what, a, what don't about vexed. Don't get vexed. Because I got a nice call. Don't get vexed. Don't get vexed. <laughs> I get a nice call. What, what, what about the um, the highway he was talking about? Yeah, I was, was going to tell you that. Yeah, that was, I was going to tell you that. Yeah. That when I resigned from the Congress of the people in disgust that they joined with the UNC, the former People's Partnership, I had formed an organization called the Diego Martin Redevelopment Committee because I always want to be serving and came up with a plan to solve the Diego Martin traffic problem by bypassing four roads and went to meet the Jack Warner that I didn't have the greatest respect for and that's my issue, but was willing to work alongside them. When they saw that the plan was feasible, they put it in place and Trinidadians forget that, and I know because I live in Diego Martin, that prior to the bypass being built and open, that we used to stay, we, we used to sit in traffic from movie town to get home hours every day, back up in every side street in St. James. Do you remember? Yes, yes, Pe right. The people of West Morins couldn't come out of West Morins mm -hmm. because people trying to go, take, take shortcuts. So you were also instru instrumental in bringing some water. I got the... I got water for the people in Rich Plain. Rich Plain. Yeah. Uh, hello, good evening. Hello, hello good evening. Not, it's not a game. Yes. I forgot to ask you, Mr. Phillips. When you come, Prime Minister, will you um, will rearrange this one commissioner business? Because I find it overgrown. You know, in, in Sawal, a long time, we had one six of Sawal Hill. Now we got six. Can I pull at the same thing? 
and many other areas. Would you uh, try and rearrange, instead of one commissioner, you have one from Brand to Sears to Tower, and about three to really get it. Because one commissioner can't do the work. You call us. We overburden students of the charity. And I believe that is the problem we have. That's why they can't let a commissioner. If we had three commissioners, we have done that before already. It is too much for one man. You understand? And well, I believe sir. when you come, when you get in power, first thing you are in that and national service. Learn to pray, learn to dress, learn to train. Those three things is when you get five minutes, I will like you to do that. Not five minutes, I'm manager. You got that by Mr. Okay. Uh, when I get the money, that, you can't. Uh, uh, caller. Thank you very much, Mark. Caller, my number yeah. is 682210. 682210. Message me, I want to talk to you. And, oh, and, and, and he's brilliant. That's Maki Padmore. What, listen a minute. God. Hello? I, I, oh, sorry, you have another caller. Yeah, hello, good evening. Yeah. But I want to answer uh, that commissioner sure, thing. No problem, yeah. Hello? Good evening. Good evening. No question. In terms of fast station. No, I work in Port of Spain and, and well observed, right? Right to road, power station headquarters. Apparently, even though there's Belmont, there is the one in four roads. Whenever there's any major, major fire within the Port of Spain environment, these appliances just have to leave to go. And what I just said, and I remember, remember when we had the, the, the big major fire up at um, up in Chitty, they were up. Mm -hmm, Go ahead. And the, the same appliances from the right road had a solution to go quite up on that side. Mm -hmm. So my question is, if given the mandate to be the Prime Minister of this country, will you look at the idea of having more and more, how do you put it, bigger fast stations in, in the vicinity so the right road will have a lead to go quite up in the have a lead to go quite up in the uh. constituency or, if, if, if you want to talk about Absolutely, uh, and, and I, want, I want to answer you. Yeah? So, okay. so if you could listen, off, I want to answer that. Thank you very much for don't, don't, Just let me answer those two, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why you have to let me finish the idea of the 41 autonomous constituencies. Dago Martin West, Toko Manzanilla, Karani East, Tobago West must have their basic resources that they can lend to other people in, the, in close by. But you must be able to operate a, 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 a proper healthcare facility in each of those constituencies operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week that could stabilize and manage all casualty requirements, have minor surgery suites, so that people are always within five and 10 minutes of any tragedy, crisis, or emergency. They must have their own ambulances, their own fire stations. He's correct. He's absolutely correct. And again, the Constituency Board of Supervisors, same thing. We say that there is a supervisor for security. What we are going to event, what we, what we basically suggesting is 41 supervisors of security working with the Commissioner of Police. You imagine you're the Commissioner of Police and you call your 41 supervisors of national security, each of them responsible for each constituency. And they're responsible for the stations and the police officers and all the assets below them. And they say, listen, this is the targets we want to hit this year because each constituency would have different crime fighting requirements and you know that some people would need more assets and more resources and what, you would what, what role will be will the mp play the member of parliament should be the coordinator in a progressive empowerment party government we want to bring to the parliament law an amendment to the constitution that separates the legislature from the executive no more should members of parliament be also ministers all you are is a member of parliament. And if you're a member of parliament and you have a constituency board of supervisors managing your constituency, there should be no way, no way at all. What will be the size of your cabinet? 13. One, three? One, three. It might be less. The constituency board of supervisors so brings about, the power. So what about all those jobs, the, the job losses? For what, cabinets, ministers? No, ministries. Ministries. Cabinet, cabinet, no, because cabinets, because having a minister of works, having Rohan Senadan sit down in the Ministry of Works and decide when Point 14 going to get their roads paved and when Toko Manzanella going to get a sidewalk and when Dego Martin going to get a bridge. Imagine now you have 41 supervisors of public works operating with a budget that they can send their invoices because it's been approved by cabinet in the budget that they could now execute their own work at the same time, everybody's streets and roads getting paved at the same time, in, with contractors from within the constituency getting contracts to maintain. So now you don't have only 
Because the PNM in power, or the UNC in power, we have one mega contractor getting all the contracts. All of a sudden, the thing will start to make sense. All of a sudden, the people will be able to get representation on the ground. You don't need a cabinet meeting and planning in isolation. What you need is more government on the ground. We don't have that, and that's what the PEP proposes. The, the commissioner issue. The our, All that coming out our, of our 41 national security advisors are senior police officers. They have to be above the rank of inspector at a certain level with certain qualifications so that they can work together with the commissioner of police and act as an assistant commissioner within the constituency. So your caller asked for three, we give them 41. Uh, some people, some people, Philip, some people believe that... Um, you are here to split the vote. What do you have to say about that? We have no splitting of no votes. What the people who are listening to us are hearing is a real political alternative to the mayhem of the PNM and the UNC. We have people coming across from all sides. Today, Professor Patrick Watson posted on social media, save Trinidad and Tobago vote against people of Belmont and Barataria. Professor Patrick Watson today, the leading economist in Trinidad and Tobago, appealed to the people of Barataria and Belmont to vote against the PNM and UNC. There's only one other option, the PEP. Mayor of, uh, former Mayor of Arima, Gassan Youssef, is on record now endorsing the party and saying that the party has the potential to deliver on what it is. Look and listen to the people on the ground. They have no splitting of no votes. They have no party that is entitled to own anybody's votes. This first force, second force, third force foolishness is based on racism. First force is what? Afro votes. Second force is what? Indo votes. Third force is catch your tail. All the people of Trinidad and Tobago have a vote and they should be able to choose a political organization to give them the representation that they need. Okay, we need to take a break. We'll be right back. This is Power 102. Empowering you. Every detail checked. My favorite thing was the food slide. Every ride My prepared. Was My favorite thing was the food slide. I was just reminded that while the culture and our social media is ready. My favorite thing was the being on stage and meeting my other man. Sunday, 22nd July. No, but it's, I wish you asked me that on air. Ask me that on air. Because that is important. Yeah. With all the attractions you remember and the artists to make you jump. Wow. Kids are eighty dollars, adults one hundred and twenty, and children Man. under two years old enter free. Tickets are out, so get them now. At Francis Fashion Shoe Locker, Corner Queen and Henry Street, Port of Spain, Trin City Mall, Tuna Puna and Arima, Larry's Fish, Chiguanas, Burger King, Curap, Fast International, Arima and Trin City Mall, and at Boom 94's offices, eighty-eight to ninety, Abercrombie Street, Port of Spain. The Sunshine Cereals. Summer Kids Jamboree. The most fun you've ever had before awaits. Sunday, 22nd July, at the Center of Excellence, McCoy. The Sunshine Series. Summer Kids Jamboree. Sponsored by V8. Juicy Blue Waters and Blue Waters Crab. Little Caesars Pizza. Burger King. And Pier Drax. My name is Yen. You good there? Go pop me off. I'll turn off the Wi-Fi on this phone. Right? So, I just have this. No, my video is sticking. I get in um, marriage proposals. Uh. Again, marriage proposals. I didn't know the show was so powerful. I'll be here sooner. <laughs> Wednesday mornings at 10.30. I'd have been here sooner if I knew. Fire service and its second division officers and issues that impact public safety and security. Join the conversation and add your perspective as we seek to improve the working conditions of fire officers and address the safety needs of our changing society. Fire Corps. Fire Corps. Andy Johnson said today that this is the number one radio station. Now that's true. Wednesday mornings at 10 p.m. on Power 1 to FM. Empowering you. Your house is for you to enjoy. I didn't know. See, you see where talk reach? You see where talk reach? <laughs> <laughs>
No, but when you call this and you compare this to traditional media, when they talk traditional media, it's 7 o'clock news and printed news. This is news as it happens, which is a different thing. Call air support today at 225 8725 or visit them on Facebook at air support GPS. Air support GPS for peace of mind. You're listening to Power 102. So we're back inside. Before God speaks a word, I want to ask Philip on. There's a lot of talk about the hot spots. I don't know who painted them red. <laughs> Somebody painted parts of chair and for the beach. This is a hot spot in the ground. How are you going to deal with that? I mean, um, you know, Lavater is a place I used to be frequenting. And I'm kind of scared also because somebody painted it red. I'm telling you that's hot. For over a decade, I have been speaking about more of our beat and Lavater Silots. Those communities have been left behind. We've been making excuses, we've been shaming, we've been blaming, but nobody's been going in to give the people hope and opportunity, unlike anybody else. Because I made the example the other day, I, I, I sat in Fatima College stands and I filmed Fatima College and I filmed Mukarapu Junior Secondary. And I said, that can't be a prestige school. And across the street and I feel you have a failed school in Trinidad. Something is wrong. We're mismanaging the country. We need to look into these communities and find out what is lacking. Everybody has the same basic needs, according to Maslow. We need to look into more of them love until see lots of not just there. We have in Bacade, in South. We have Enterprise, Enterprise in Chagonas. We have the whole of Diego Martin, now Patna, River State, Bagatelle, La, La Perte, Rich Plain, Covey, Mason, Factory Road, Abbey Pujad, Big Yard, Scorpion. We have Waterhole, Harding Place, Cocorit. These communities have been left behind. And the things that matter to them still, jobs, home ownership, education, healthcare, affordable food. Hit those numbers. We don't need a crime plan, you know. We need to take care of our people plan. We've never done that. I listen to Keith Rowley speak. And when he speak about walking about his community, he speaks about Glencoe, Bayshore, and West Morins. And he forgets that it's Coveen and Rich Plain and Big Yard that has been feeding his family. Bayshaw and West Morris can't elect nobody to office, and I say that Franco men. We cannot carry half the population forward and leave half behind and think we're gonna have a working country. Mova, Beatham, Lavantel, and Silots are in need of an urgent social redevelopment intervention. And no government coming to office that fails to do that could succeed at running this country. You, you're saying, you said that You've spoken to some foreigners Plenty. concerning cleaning up the police service and the city cleaning. Six months. Six months time. Six months. Have you spoken to foreigners about jailing our politicians who <laughs> thief money? And how long did it tell you it will God. take to start God. jailing them? That is my mission. That is my mission. Now you're talking, God, Christopher. Because what I would like is to go as far back as Johnny O'Halloran. All our money. Bring it back. This country had money to make Dubai shame. We've allowed people to get away. We fire people and say, well, right, they get punished. You thief $100 million, you ain't get punished, and want money back. And you need to go to court. You have questions to answer. We've existed in this country where criminality and a rogues gallery has become who we are. And the average person walking around out there thinking all politicians are thief because the PNM and the UNC doesn't seem to know that they have a responsibility to safeguard the people's treasury. That's your job. That's the purpose of government. And if the people before you, Kate Rowley made a legend of himself campaigning on all the wrongdoing that was taking place under the People's Partnership, not one single person that he named and shamed was brought to justice in three years. So it was a stunt. It was a game to get office. The people looking on, they must think that all of them on games. They, must, they hear, they know. This is a country notorious for narcotics trafficking. Yeah, you think it's the big shots going down in the pirog yes, and taking the coke out of the boat? You have just said it. Keith Rowley became famous. Make a legend for himself. For saying that yeah. he will lock them up. Yeah. We Bring them that, to justice. We heard that already. How are you going to do it? He dances and parties with them. I am caught with them. It's different. Mm. I fight in them now. They know. Every step, I know every lawyer right now. I mean, look at it. When you could have a journalist boast on Facebook 
that TV6 blocks me. Why would TV6 block me? Prior to there being a progressive empowerment party, I was a sweetheart. Faris and me used to be alternating on Hema show. Everybody loved to have me there. But now we're standing against the oligarchy and we're bringing real plans and policies that will undo the gravy train that has been plundering this nation. All of a sudden, silence Philip at all costs. Death threats, scandalize his name, character assassination. The latest thing is he's a racist. That's the last play in the PNM playbook. Who more racist than the PNM? Move a bit of love and tell and see lots. Who responsible for them? If the well-being of the citizenry is the function, purpose, and reason for government, which government has ever known that the people in Rich Plain needed water? When they got that water, the woman tell me, our old lady, she said, Mr. Philip, we didn't have water in this, co this community for 62 years. 62 years. When Charmaine Sahadio came on Pigot's corner to stand up there and endorse the Progressive Empowerment Party, she is covered head to toe in tumors. She used to be homeless, living downstairs, a house on a hill in Digo Martin. It is work that we did that got her into a home. She just come to say, listen to this man. Because if he tell you he's going to do it, he's going to do it. And she and I, you, like you, I have a heart for people. That's the only reason I'm doing this. If I didn't have compassion, God, when I go down, down to feed the homeless, we don't go and feed the pretty homeless, you know. We just go downstairs, Riverside Plaza, car park, where the people who are literally falling apart just live. It's them we take food for. When I go there, it's drain my soul that a country this rich could do that to people. Okay, let's take some more calls. Hello, good evening. Hello? Hello, pleasant evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Pleasant evening, Mr. Philip. Good evening. If you're Prime Minister in the morning... We need you to speak up. Please. If you're Prime Minister in the morning, mm -hmm. how would you deal with the education system? You know the system at present is, is not good because you're taking children without academic backgrounds, um, uh, 50, 60 percent marks, and putting them into a system and expect them to be academic, and they're fighting and they're doing all sorts of stuff. How would you deal with the education system? Because no longer you have technical vocational studies for, for, for young children, I mean, at the age of 14, 15, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. What way, how you would you deal with the, the education system? That's one of the things that the case. That's a brilliant question. And you're listening off here? Are you listening now? Yes. Okay. Um, our plan is basically to abolish the SEA, which is child abuse. We should not be planning children's lives from the age of 10 and 11. We propose a 10-year school similar to the Finland model. And if you're familiar, and you can check it on YouTube. Yeah, I'm familiar. You're familiar, right? The Finland model is head and shoulders above every other nation's standard of education in the world. And the Finland model do not separate children. Zone your children, zone your schools, community schools, 10-year schools. You go into school at the age of 5 when you come out at the age of 15. Mommy and daddy and all your primary caregivers know your teachers and your principal and your vice principal for your entire academic career. You've established strong bonds with your peers from early childhood. That is how you knit a community together and give people a chance at a real education. We will replace the SEA with a GPA. Every child has a grade point average. They, they're competing only with themselves. There would be a national target. Let's assume it's 4.0. Every child in a class, every term, there would be an examination administered by the Ministry of Education, education supervisors. This has nothing to do with the teacher. They come in, administer the education, uh, the examination, and leave, and they send the results. All of the children in the class, they get results on, based on their performance. And their collective performance is the teacher's performance. And all the teacher's performance is the principal's performance. And all the principal's performance is the education supervisors of the constituency performance. And at the end of the exam, when the results come in, you could look and see which children ex excelled and make sure that if it is necessary, we slipstream them into schools for advanced children or into classes that, that accommodate the... Because you will always have brilliant children in the midst. Yes, but you will but what but this model will help you find the schools and the classes that have the children that perform the least that you could raise flags for a 4.8 4.0 is the average any child that do less than 3.8 should raise a flag so there was special aptitudes arts culture sports. absolutely we need all of that Music. but we need all of that Technical vocation. But, uh, but, but, but we, we, want, we, we, we want everybody to be a doctor and a lawyer, but he's right. The society, the society needs craftsmen, tradesmen. We need chefs. We, we need people in every discipline. You just mentioned sport. 
art, culture. Yeah. We've monetized those things. China lost its way. Our culture is a joke. What was our culture? Where is it? Where's our culture? We, we give it a digital B-Mobile Caribbean tag. Where's the real authentic community culture of the people? That's gone. But that culture came from the word agriculture. Culture was the harv was at harvest time. After all, the, 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 the people work together and bring their crops in, and we gather together for the first time, and we have a harvest. Harvest time was the first carnival. All of those things we've lost, we need to go back to that. We need to go back to rebuilding the community. A nation is a collection of communities. If we fix the community, we fix the country. Say no more. Thank you, Colin. Thank you, Colin. Thank you, Colin. Thank you, Colin. Thank Hello, you. good evening. Yes, good evening. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Feeling like general elections here, boy? This, this man has some ideas that I have never even heard Kamala or Rowley discuss. I've heard this man, I, I want all one or two to discuss um, when is this man coming back? God, have a brilliant job. I want to hear this man again. I want to hear some more ideas. This is brilliant. And um, I think I heard him mention something already. A little clip, either WhatsApp or something about the Savannah. I want to hear that one about bringing people to display their talents and getting the police to walk amongst these gazebos or some, some, some kind of thing. Let's hear that idea, please. All right. Thank you. One after this call. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Yes, Granny Kathleen. Hello. Yes, hello. Yes, we good evening. You. Good evening, Granny. Um, yes. Granny Kathleen. Yes, Mother. Go ahead. I want to ask Mr. Phillips, um, I live at Labury. It's Muslim. Go ahead. Minister, go, Minister, come. And I will still the same way. And uh, as fast, late as fast, I would like to say that the work, the, the, that the young men in Labury will get work because they used to get work by the ship coming and the bucket and the, the, the pit. We have the oil, the pitch, and everything down here. But everybody just leave us here. They don't even want to fix the road. I want to know what you will do. All right. Thank you. Because it's time for your paper. But listen to me. You have to break your spell with PNM. Because these people that were there are killed by with their PNM. And you have to break this spell. I know what you're going to do. So get the PNM out of the head. Thank you very because much. Because we want the operator pitch. Entire this thing with a nice place. Thank you, Granny. Everything here. Thank you, Granny. So we I would like you to do something for the operator. We're going to. Right? We're going to. I might be there and I take this seat, but I want for the young to in the in the operator. All right? Yes, Granny. Thank you. Thank yes. you very much. And, 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 God, you see, if it's one thing, eh? When you see the old people, especially the old ladies, call and bless us like that, I feel like we're on the right path. And she's correct. We have the largest pitch lake in the world, one of two or three. But ours is the largest. We are, it is I who have been calling to find out where's the pitch lake money going? Where's that money? No, but where's the money? Where's the money? It doesn't come up in the budget. Where, where's that money? How come when Colm Emmert stand up to talk, he doesn't mention in the budget where the final, where the income from the pitch lake went. So what about the money that they collect every day for the trans, the cash money? All of that. That they, for the renewal of license. All of that. It's, all of that. You know, Wherever that's a bank, they watch me. That the is a ministry, massive bank. The ministry, at the, the transport division. That is a bank. No, but God. Every day is cash money. God, plenty God money. I want to tell the caller who asked when I can come you back. Anytime you want me, I will be back. But I want to say, <laughs> Granny correct about on, Granny correct about Labre. Granny correct about the pitch lake. Granny correct about, about South Trinidad. South Trinidad. But I but this call and Labre alone. Leave Labre alone. Granny, I just program. Granny, if you're listening, Granny, I promise you. I promise you, because we've already been to point four ten. In 17 months, we've already had a public meeting in Point Fortin. Granny, I know the value of Labre. I promise you, we will right. treat Labre Hello. nice. Hello, good evening. Hello. Yes, Hi, good, good evening. evening. Go Philip, question again. We have a state that has cycling by the German Cuba recently there. What is your, your policies on, on sports tourism? Because I'm into cycling and I've been using a lot of friends and they're really interested in coming down down here. This country hosted a Junior Panam Panam cycling championships last year and 
we were told that the UCI was thinking about making Donia a satellite station so that the European athletes, when winter time, they could come and get the train. And we are still waiting to see something happen. I would like to hear your take on, on sports in general and sports tourism. Thank you. You have a high level, I swear to you. Your listeners, I'll come back on the show. Your listeners should be in the cabinet. God, Michael Phillips and I had, I bounced him up in a bakery the day and we sit down and we talk for hours. Michael Phillips should be a minister of sport. Atto Bolden. You see what Atto Bolden doing in the world with our athletes and the Caribbean athletes? Atto Bolden should be a minister of sport. Shaka Hislop. We have Atto Bolden and Shaka Hislop that should be sports ambassadors for Trinidad and Tobago. Everywhere they go, NBC and ESPN follows. We have Michael Phillips. Michael gets out his bed on a Sunday morning to close piece of the Crystal Stream Highway at 4 o'clock in the morning for families to take the children to ride on the highway. He does that. He was working, I think, Sport TT as the chairman, and he resigned from that. He said, Ole, Ole, on kicks. We have real mm -hmm. people. We have men like Brian Chin Leung. Mm -hmm. Brian mm -hmm. Chin Leung in martial arts, decades. This country should be leading the world right now in a lot of sports disciplines, and we're not, because we treat sport like a way to get money and get fame, but it is not anything that we could build. That caller is absolutely correct. Sp sp sporting is a discipline. It's not just the man who win the gold medal, the thousand people that follow him behind him that make that a part of their life regime. You need to also pay respect to them. Hello, good evening, caller. Hello, good night, Doris. Um, yeah. Good night, Philip, and to um, Piero. Good, good night. Good night. Um, I'm calling because um, I know that there are a lot of people out there that are undecided the fact that there's a new party and they may not know there's a lot of people that don't know about the party that need to know about this party now i'm calling from the standpoint of being a member of the district of the pup what i like people to know is that philip is not just the only person at the forefront that is driving the party but what people don't see is that there's a team of hard-working, devoted people that want to see change working in the background. And it's very much like a family. Now, um, I personally, um, I want to see change in my country. So I looked at both parties, the UNP and the PNN, and what they have delivered in the last 56 years. And I have observed that they're not producing, they're not giving the people what they should, what they deserve. I, I come to the fact, the understanding that we will not have any change under the present, present government uh, or the UNC. It's not going to change. Kamala, for, for example, made a statement before, I, I put, I, you can correct me if I'm wrong, before she got into government, she said, if she doesn't win, there'll be blood pouring on the streets of Trinidad. Now, tell me something. Who wants to vote a prime minister that wants to see blood flowing on the streets of Trinidad? And you know something, after the how many years of her being in government, we are seeing the blood flowing on the streets of Trinidad, right? The PNN has not done anything in the last 56 years. For example, look at Belmont. Belmont was under water. Look at the conditions of Belmont at, the, at, at this present moment. It is, it is unacceptable, right? So how could we continue to vote government that is doing nothing? I worry about the future generation. I worry about our children, school, health care. Look at our roads, poor infrastructure. We deserve better. It's a rich country, and we should not be going through the, the, what we're going through today. So I would like to urge the people of Trinidad and Tobago. I, as a member of the Fed, am not being biased. I'm being realistic. We need change. And if Philip does not deliver, we'll stand up, and we will bring him at this time, he got to he got to deliver, right? But I'm telling you, we have a good leader of the party. He's passionate, and I can understand his frustration. 
And sometimes people may not understand that. You may come across in a way that you don't understand, but you have to come into San Avenue and listen to what goes on on a Saturday. Listen to, to some of the people speak to you, right? To get a better understanding. Don't judge. And another thing is, all this going on in the media is a distraction. We need change, but we need it now. We can't leave this country to go down the train, right? Okay. So I would urge the people of Sri Lanka, vote for Felicia, for Belmont, and vote for Christoph, San Lara, Barataria. Free political and argument. And we'll see the kind of change that will take place in our country. All right. We'll see that change will begin with these two candidates. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much. Thank you very and much. And I, I, I hope that Philip will continue to do the good job that he's doing, and you guys, you're doing a good job. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We had to send PP a bill for that. No, you see, you see, this is what I tell you. This is what I tell you. You have no idea. This is not no party where holy people on top say it. That's how it goes, you know. This entire organization. It is the people who in the party that own and operate this party. Okay. And you hear them speak. You hear how she spoke 20, about the party. She speaks like this is her party. We serve a purpose. 2020. 2020. Mm -hmm. You have 18, 18, 5. 18, 18, 5. PP 5. 18 PNM. 18 UNC. Who will the PEP form the government with? How all your scenarios don't have PEP winning? <laughs> because... I just ask you. Let's be realistic. No, because being realistic is we want 41 seats. Yeah, but what, what, if you what, were... What if this election... If, ask Barbados. Uh, Look at what Barbados is doing with their total exactly. whitewash. Exactly. It's not that you don't want an opposition. God, you need to fix this country. We have never had real representation during the Tobago. If this tonight, if the callers was an election, clean sweep. Okay. Clean sweep. Let's be real. You open the no, phone let's be in realistic. Power 102 <laughs> and you know you was expecting some real throat buses to call. You know okay. that? <laughs> yeah. No, I was expecting. I, and no, listen, I your callers call. reaffirm my call. faith call. in Trinidad and Tobago. Is that 18, 18, 5 scenario? 18, 18. It, 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 it shouldn't arise. If it does arise, the Progressive Empowerment Party will retreat in caucus and discuss. But if they ask my opinion, I am not interested in joining forces with either the PNM or the UNC a in uh, any circumstances. One time. The people have to take responsibility for their country. The people, are, listen, mm -hmm. the people of Caranage. So you will advise. Took, look how long the people of Caranage took to get their fish market. You will advise. You wouldn't, you would not team up. You would not no. seek to negotiate. Our oh, policies no. are non-negotiable. God, I want to tell you something. We no. want to lock up some of their finances. There are past prime ministers of this country that have questions to answer. The Progressive Empowerment Party cannot suborn its principles or stand down on the things that we've been championing just to have office. It would make a mockery of everything we've done. Correct. So 18, 18, 5. Mm. Backbench for that. Back to the election. Or backbench back for that. The PEP will sit down on the back, back bench. bench if, listen, at the end of the day, we have a responsibility to the people of Trinidad and Tobago to create a real alternative to the madness that has been passing as political and, and government in this country. We've never had, at no time ever, a government that cared for all the people of this country. And mm -hmm. Trinidad have to wake up But to you that. wouldn't resign. Me? 18, 18, 5. Again, that's up to them. That's up to that lady who called on all of the other PEP members. I will always make myself. God, I was the founder of the Jericho Project. And when I got into politics, immediately I stepped down, passed it over. I don't, I, I don't hold on to things, you know. I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not looking for office to validate me. I am here to serve. And if my opportunity to serve runs its course, let somebody else 13 step up. 13 cabinet. 13 cabinet positions. Name the 13. Watch this. The Ministry of Sport shouldn't be a ministry. It should be a department of sport in the Prime Minister's office, as is tourism. Do you need a master fi um, finance ministry? And in that ministry, you would have a junior minister responsible for diversification. You have a minister of the economy and a minister of diversification. But our biggest ministry, believe it or not, will be social development. 
Social development is what this country needs. This country needs all of its people to be brought under one umbrella. So you have finance, finance social, development, social development, education, ed education national security. National security. Well, the, the, the attorney general is there. Food production. You have to have an attorney yeah, general. Yeah, food production. Food production. Where we at again? I didn't walk with those. Right. So you're catching sure. me. No, 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 no. But you're catching sure, me. No, 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 no but no. Let, you want to go through it. Planning. Plan. We have to have planning. That's seven. We, we have to have a ministry of health. Mm -hmm. That's eight. Right. But you, but you see where we go. Right, right. You see where we go in with it because thirteen, no more. But it, it I. We hard pressed Maximum 15. It hard pressed across 10. No, you're going higher, we're coming lower. I'm saying to you that Ministry of Foreign Affairs mm -hmm. isn't a ministry. You, long ago, when they didn't have instant communication, you needed... Let's take one final... Just no, no, let me give it this. You, you needed ambassadors far flung all around the world so you could communicate by letter and phone call and send that ambassador to talk to the yeah, king or the affairs. queen. Listen. You need a, you need you a, need a department of foreign affairs. There is out one of the, the, out the, of the prime minister's office again. The prime minister in this country does no work, you know. According to our constitution, the prime minister is minister of everything. You only need two a prime minister and attorney general. Hello, good evening. Yes. Good evening. Please don't forget the Savannah idea. Yes. Oh, yeah. Good evening. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, Savannah. This guy seems to know a lot. Of, he's a he's a PP as well. You have a lot of PP callers calling yeah. him. No, he, but he's a PP. He's a no, I I don't know. But I I want to. Mikey is a PP. He's <laughs> Go ahead. Go yes. ahead about yes, the Savannah. Yes, the the, 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 the Savannah project. Seat. No, but I, I I'm not I'm not sure which of the projects he's talking about. So I wanna I wanted to engage him just now when he called. But all of our policies involve creating green spaces and opportunities for the people. At the end of the day, it comes down to community, you know. Make sure that we rebuild the community. People are supposed to be able to get into their own homes, get proper jobs, affordable food, recreation, sport, culture. God, Trinidad is not a good place to live right now, if we're honest. We all live in fear. We all frustrated. The bank, you're walking the bank, the line long, they're charging you all kind of mad fees. They don't pay you no interest. You can't get no loan. Small businesses in this country dying by the day. They can't access credit or finance. They can't get foreign exchange. They're collapsing. And the third Which local is, politician you have any type of admiration for? Local politician. Look yes. at that question. <laughs> <laughs> any foreign politician you have admiration for? Well, you know how to say Mandela. You know how to say Gandhi. You how to say those names. They've done things. They've changed the world. They've been people. It doesn't have to be a politician. I mean, I, I, I like to quote Henry Ford. He said, if people had asked me, um, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said, a, a faster horse. I see man who gave the world mass-produced cars and affordable cars. I look to people who change the way communities operate. We say that like a rising tide, we want to lift all boats. Anybody that does that, anybody who... Einstein shook off all of the all, all the accolades they wanted to give him and he just wanted to make himself about global service. You know, all of his messages that out there, he said you can't operate, you can't solve problems operating at the mindset that create problems. We better leave it here. Hey, this was a real nice interview. We'll your callers, your listeners, bro, I'm telling you, be proud of that though. Right. Be very proud of that. It was right. an absolute pleasure. Ladies thank and you gentlemen, very much. Thank you very much for listening to Breaking the Cycle. All right, see you next week.